So today we're gonna be starting our 2017 Ford Transit camper van build. We've been doing a lot of research on this, trying to figure out just what needs to go first, what we need to start building first, and we decided we need to start with the floor. owners used this as a work truck and they had toolboxes and cabinets drilled directly into the floor. So locating and fixing all of these tiny holes that they left behind was definitely a priority of ours. I hope this is more comfortable when we're done with it. As I continued to clean the van floor, Ron used an angle grinder to remove any surface rust and also apply self-etching paint to any spots of exposed bare metal to avoid any further rust from forming on the floor. So we went and picked up some tape for the small holes and we got some flex tape. I'm seeing a lot of commercials, I'm sure we all have about this stuff, so I'm sure it'll do just fine. I've never used this stuff, but it is extremely sticky, so I think if we do it on the top here, and then eventually we'll try to get under there and do the bottom, I'm sure it'll be just fine and we won't have any water getting through these holes. Wow, that's freaking on there. I'm glad we went this route instead of welding this all shut because that would have taken so long and it definitely would have not done a good a job as this. So this is our one by one by eighth inch thick aluminum tubing. This is what we're going to be laying widthwise every so often all the way down to the end of the van. We are going to be laying it down on top of these corrugations so that once this is secured down to these corrugations, we can easily fit our also one inch fiberboard pieces in between two pieces of aluminum. That way we know the entire floor is going to be flush and then also underneath the aluminum, we have a little bit of an air pocket so that the entire floor and insulation has room to breathe. So we decided to go with aluminum instead of wood because we didn't want any sort of material that could potentially collect moisture and not release that moisture, which wood has the potential to do that. Also, aluminum is much lighter and it is much stronger. Wood would have been cheaper, <laughs> no pun intended, but we decided to go with the aluminum either way because this is the way that we think is best. So currently, we're gonna figure out how many pieces of aluminum we want and where, figure out how long they need to be, all that. So we have six 10 and a half foot pieces of this aluminum. So we're gonna see what we can do with it. Now I cannot stress enough the importance of triple checking your measurements. Nothing is worse than having to problem solve an avoidable mistake or even worse, wasting material. After double and triple checking our measurements, then cutting, labeling, and cleaning up any jagged ends of all 11 aluminum pieces, we are then able to place them back into the van to ensure all of the pieces fit as we expected them to. Thankfully, they all fit perfectly. So we got all the aluminum cut out, we got it all laid out inside the van, and so far, it's looking really good. So yeah, the next step is gonna be cutting the fiberboard to length and setting it in between these pieces of the aluminum. These pieces of aluminum are on top of the corrugations of the van, and our fiberboard is also one inch thick, just like the aluminum pieces, so everything is going to be flush. Yep, it's gonna make a nice flat surface for the plywood in the end to be put right on top of everything, and it's gonna be nice and flat. So you also see here that we do have some of the aluminum pieces that are on just flat metal. They're not on top of the corrugations. For those ones, since they do sit a little bit lower down, what we plan on doing 
to have the fiberboard sit flush and we don't have a little bit of a gap here in between the aluminum and the fiberboard, we are going to take a piece of plywood that we bought that's 3 8 inch thick. That is going to be the difference between the corrugation and the top of the aluminum. And we are actually going to paint those small thin strips of 3 inch 3 8 inch thick wood with mold and mildew resistant paint that is also rust inhibitive. And then we are going to just simply use adhesive to stick them on top of the aluminum. We're also going to be using some of that painted plywood in places that are flat in the van where we want a little bit of extra support where there aren't any corrugations as well. Today we're going to be measuring and cutting the fiberboard. So there are three different types of fiberboard that we are thinking about buying. One of them is XPS, poly iso, and then EPS fiberboard. Now each of them have different characteristics of whether or not they're mold and mildew resistant, how much water they retain, what is the R value, what is the price, all of that kind of stuff. We ended up going with the poly iso for a few different reasons. One, it had the highest R value, but at the same time was a little bit cheaper than I believe the XPS that we were also looking at. And then the EPS is fiberboard that was like, has those little tiny foam balls in it. And we just didn't want to have to deal with the mess. And it also had a lower, our value, and was, but it was the cheapest, but we decided not to go with that. So we just went out and bought some more materials that we needed. We needed a jigsaw and then some, not workhorses. What are they called? Sawhorses. Sawhorses. We went out and bought some of those, so now we're just gonna take everything out of the van. We're now laying down all the aluminum that we already cut so that we can actually get the final measurements of what sizes the fiberboard needs to be. Ron's doing a great job. So bright. What is that? Come on, our first piece went really well there. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good. I like it. We Not measured yet. correctly. We did miss a chunk right here. That's okay though. We'll just try not to have that happen again. So for this section, it's a little tougher than the last. So this last section was just a rectangle. This section, we have to work around the wheel well. So what I'm doing right now is trying to make some like cardboard templates so then we can stick them all together, like tape them all together with the tape, and then trace it onto a piece of the fiberboard and then cut it out from there. So we got our cardboard template right here, and what we did here was we basically made the two end pieces right here and on the other side right there and we cut those to form around the wheel well, then we kind of connected them with all these other pieces of cardboard. So now, it fits in there really nice. We got this other piece of aluminum right here. That's kind of the end of it. So now we're just gonna take this over to a piece of the foam board and we're gonna be cutting it out. Like, that's perfect. That's freaking awesome. Yeah, it is came it, out great around the wheel wells. Is it too squished though? Is it like touching the sides or is it good? No, I mean, it's touching the sides like perfectly. Like, I think it's great. As long as that's square, we should be good. I'll have to do some measuring, but that is looking so good so far. Better than I thought it would come out. <laughs> So this is the same template. It's the same exact template we just used to cut out that piece. We basically just flipped it, put it on this side of the wheel wells, and it's looking like it's gonna be the same curves around the wheel wells. All we have to do is cut a little bit off of this section. So right now it's tucked underneath this piece of the foam board. So we're just gonna draw a nice line, cut it right there, and we can go ahead and cut out basically the same piece on the next piece of foam board. I 
decided to save your ears from hearing any more of that fiberboard being cut, so here is the final product of all of the fiberboard being laid down. So today we're going to be cutting out some little wooden strips out of our 3 8 inch thick plywood that we're going to put in certain spots for extra support. We're also going to be painting those strips of wood in some moldy mildew resistant paint. Correct way would be a table saw, but I didn't want to go out and buy one, and this actually is actually working pretty well. Three and a half. So we got all the pieces of wood cut out for the floor of the van, and Ash is working on sanding them right now, and she this is only a few of them. She's got a lot more to do. <laughs> I've already done a lot though. Yeah, I've definitely. Gone through about half. Yeah, so we got about, probably about half more to go. So I sanded down each and every one of these pieces, front, back, sides, and tops, just because they were a little bit rough, so we wanted them smoother before we were going to put a coat of paint on them. We chose this paint, one, because we already had it from painting part of oh, yeah. our house, <laughs> and two, it is mold and mildew resistant as well as rust inhibitive. So it is going to be good against any sort of moisture that might come towards it. So I think the plan here is just to hit all of these with a nice coat and then let them dry for a little bit. Might take the pups for a walk and then we'll come back, flip them over, do the other sides and then they should be good to go and we can- the sides too. Yeah, we'll do the yeah. sides as well. Um, and then we can throw them in the van. Aluminum, unlike wood, has a very just flat, clean surface when you buy it. So what we're gonna wanna do to the aluminum is sand it down just a little bit so that there's more of like a porous surface for the adhesive to stick to so that we have better adhesion. So we had a tough time finding out where all that wood went, all the tiny little pieces. So we decided to just basically put everything in and that kind of helped us out finding where everything went. And it's looking really good. So now the next step is to get this, all this, all this insulation and the aluminum and the wood all glued down into place. Now we're gonna do that in two different sections, I think is what is gonna work the best. Working from the aluminum, this piece of aluminum back, we're gonna do the rear, and then from this piece of aluminum forward, we're gonna do the front. So what we're using for adhesive, we have liquid nails, which this is gonna be used for the aluminum and the wood. We got this at, I believe, Home Depot or Lowe's. And then this is for the foam board, this is PL300. We also got this at Home Depot or Lowe's. Pretty sure it's Home Depot. <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna be using this for the foam board.
The reason we're doing it in two different sections, starting basically right here, is because now that we have this section glued, we can kind of push it down and push it up towards the front of the van, and it won't, it will only go so far because of the wheel wells, so it will make for a nice tight fit. We do the same thing for the front as well. Usually when you see people put heavy things to weigh down the fiberboard and the aluminum or whatever they're using, they put like a few bricks here, maybe a cinder block there. Ron decided to put his entire garage. So after getting the fiberboard and aluminum pieces glued down in the front as well, Ron decided that we also needed a plethora of weight in the front as well, including our entire 150 pound rooftop tent. It's excessive, yes, but we are going to have a subfloor that it will probably outlive the van. So now that we have the fiberboard and the aluminum pieces installed, the next step that we are going to do is actually figure out the best way to install the plywood pieces that is going to go on top of all of this. So we're going to do that now. So like Ash said, the next step is laying the plywood down. And we want to position all these pieces of plywood so there's no seams where we're going to be walking or very minimal seams where like the two pieces of plywood come together just so we don't have any, I don't know, warpage or anything, or the two pieces are moving if they do end up moving, which they shouldn't because they're gonna be screwed down. But this is what we came up with. We have one giant sheet of plywood right here in the middle. This is, you know, there's gonna be an aisle here where we're walking and there's no seams right here. So this is what we want. The only seam that we might have in a place that we're gonna be walking is right here where there's gonna be another piece right here. So these two pieces are gonna be butted up against each other, but we got a position in a, there's a piece of, piece of aluminum right here. So we're gonna be able to screw all these pieces down to the aluminum, especially where the seam is. And I really don't think it's gonna be a problem. So we got this piece squared up perfectly. We're gonna go ahead and figure out this piece right here. And then for the back, we'll just need a piece on each side of this big piece of plywood and then one in the back and that should be all we really need so this is three quarter inch birch plywood so it's pretty thick we were trying to decide between half inch or three quarter we ended up going with the thicker stuff just because we want it to be pretty rigid since a lot of stuff is going to be screwed down to this floor and we're going to be screwing this down to the aluminum pieces the aluminum strips we have on the floor as well as gluing it into place So this piece actually came out perfectly, a lot better than we actually expected. We thought we were gonna have to shave off a little bit on each side a little bit more, but it's, it's working out great. And I did wanna point out that on each side, we do have a little bit of an overhang over the step. This side is a lot longer than that side. This one, we are going to be having cabinets that come all the way up to about here. So we still have an entryway here. And then we also have one much bigger on the other side where actually where that overhang is, it's just going to be like a seating area, a table and a chair. So it's going to, be a lot more wide open on that side. So we got this piece cut out really well. We did have to trim it once and we were able to actually get it to fit really well by pushing this piece over a smidge. So our plan now is to take this piece that we just cut out, flip it for the other side and basically trace it, recut it out. And we might need to trim it a little bit to make it fit, but either way, it's going to be a really nice fitting puzzle piece of plywood. P puzzle plywood puzzle pieces, yes. So we got the subfloor in place, all the pieces dried just fine. We used two different primers, they're the same thing, just two different colors, that's why some are white and some are gray. We ran out of what we originally had, so we had to go buy some more. So the next step is to pull each of these pieces up one by one, figure out where the aluminum is underneath them, and then mark it on the top so we know exactly where we need to drill our holes, and then we can get these screwed down.
So Ashley went inside for now. She's working on editing our latest video. And while she's doing that, it's up to me now to get all these boards drilled and screwed down onto the van. So we got all the holes drilled and it's looking really good. We got all of them drilled except for these two back ones. They're not, they're not looking so great. We got a little bit of an issue. So you can see right here on this piece in particular, we have about an eighth inch gap between here and the aluminum. Right here on this piece, we don't have a gap because I drilled the holes and I screwed it down. It closed the gap, no problem there. But because we did that, it caused this piece of wood up in the front to lift up. Now we don't have a piece of aluminum under this wood up front. So there's no way for me to screw it down. Now we will have an adhesive under here, but I don't think that's gonna be able to pull it down and hold it down as good as a screw would. Now we got two solutions that I thought of so far. We can put another piece of aluminum up here, which would kind of be a pain. We'd have to scoop out the foam board since it already has adhesive down to the van floor. So that would be a pain, I don't really want to do that. Now the easier solution I thought of is we can add a little eighth inch piece of wood right here that runs the length of this, and we should be able to screw into that without the front of that lifting up because it should be completely level right there. So I think that's the route we're gonna take, and if that doesn't work, then we'll be adding a piece of aluminum. I don't really want to, but it is what it is. But before we go to the hardware store and whatnot, we're gonna finish the front of this. That is nice, no squeaks at all, that, that's exciting. So Ash and I went to the hardware store and we picked up this piece of wood. It's two inch by four feet long, quarter inch thick. I cut it in half and this should be exactly what we needed. I'm gonna cut one for this side and the other one for this side and it should fit right inside of that gap. So I got this left piece all screwed in and I just realized that I threw the adhesive on there and screwed it in without even double checking to make sure it was gonna work with this new quarter inch piece of wood. But thankfully, it's working out exactly how I wanted to. It's not lifting up in the front. So like I said, that's exactly what we wanted. So check that out. We got a floor in the freaking van. That is really exciting. We got a lot done today. So we're gonna be calling it a night. So the subfloor in the van is all done and we're really happy with it. It came out really good. Yep, so the next step that we're going to take is actually to be installing the actual flooring that we're going with, which is marine style vinyl flooring that is waterproof. We haven't bought it yet, but that will be an entirely other video in this van build series. For now, we just actually have an, a bunch of camping gear yeah. <laughs> in the van that we're actually just gonna, we're gonna go camping with the van, van built. Yeah, we're gonna do some van life before before the van's built. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be fun. So definitely be sure to check out next week's video because that's gonna be its own video. We'll see y'all on the trail and we'll see you next time.